Welcome to the Fierce Authenticity Podcast, where we're talking all things life, love, and leadership centered on the BIPOC experience. I'm your hostess, Sharani M. Pathak, and I'm a relationship therapist turned author, speaker, spiritual teacher, and transformational leader. If you're a returning listener, then I want to say, Thank you for coming back week after week. Every time you show up and listen to an episode of this podcast, you're participating not only in the healing of yourself, but you're also telling the universe, hell yes, to showing up as your best, most fierce, most authentic self. And if you're new around here, then I am so glad you found us. I'd love it if you send me a DM on Instagram and let me know how you came across the podcast. My IG handle is at Sharani M. Pathak, and you can find that in the show notes. I'd love to hear how you found your way to us. And I also want to extend to you a very warm welcome. If you're a BIPOC woman in leadership and you are sick and tired of how exhausted you feel living in a white-centered, patriarchal, toxic world that was set up to keep us down, then you're in the right place. Around here, we don't talk about fluff. I have a no bullshit approach to talking about the things that are real in our experiences as BIPOC women. I talk about things that others don't want to talk about. (laughs) You know, most people want to glaze over the hard stuff, and I actually love it. I love, 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 love. Digging into those deep, dark, shadowy places, all of the secrets that we've held, that our body holds, that our DNA has. I love it. I thrive (laughs) working in those shadowy places, the places that everyone else wants to turn away from. So if you're looking for someone And some place where we keep it real, we don't mess around, and we talk about things that actually matter, then welcome home. Very soon, the sanctuary for BIPOC women in leadership is going to be opening. There's already a wait list of women who have shared their voices about what they want from this sanctuary, a space for women who look like you and me. This is a call that's been placed on my heart to create that space and create that community, to really be a sanctuary for us. Because in a world that operates on systems, that were created to keep us down, we need safe spaces for us to come together and be in community to share our experiences and to heal and learn and grow together. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then head on over to www.bipocsanctuary.com to join the wait list and share your voice around what you would like to see from this community that's being created just for you. Again, that's www.bipocsanctuary.com. Now, over the past several episodes, we've been talking about How as BIPOC women, (laughs) 
We are powerful as fuck. Yeah, we are. You. I'm talking to you. You are powerful as fuck. And we've also been talking about the gifts of the fierce feminine and connecting back in with all of those parts of you that are white centric patriarchal culture has led you to turn off and disconnect from. And in the last episode, I also talked about how as a result of the toxic patriarchal world that we live in, there's been a bastardization of the feminine. And today we're going to be digging a little bit deeper into that. Deeper into the bastardization of the feminine and the burdens that we carry in our bones and in our DNA as BIPOC women. Because you know, as well as I do, that the burdens we carry are heavy. The burdens we carry are many. (laughs) And we're not only carrying our own burdens from our own lived experiences here in the here and now from our growing up, but we are also carrying the pain of generations of our ancestors who came before us, the pain they experienced that was never resolved, their responses to trauma that we inherited, which study on epigenetics now validates, our DNA actually changes. Well, the DNA doesn't change. The expression of certain genes in our DNA is different especially for those of us who come from a lineage of people who were enslaved, colonized, stolen, abused. And even though that was centuries ago, that still lives here in our world today. So as women of color, we're not only carrying that of our ancestors and all of those who came before us. We're also carrying the pain of our lived experiences. The pain of the men that we love and what the system has done to them. We carry the pain of seeing the impact of systemic and institutionalized racism and all the other isms out there. We feel their pain. We carry that for them. The depression, the PTSD, the alcoholism, addiction, and violence, both in the home and out there in the rest of the world. We carry that within us. And no matter how hard we try to compartmentalize it, and put it aside, no matter how hard we try to shove it into a filing cabinet filed away into some corner of our mind. These experiences live within us. It's in our cellular memory. It's in our body. It's in our behaviors. We carry the pain of watching generations of children continuing to get traumatized by adults who had been traumatized. And we also know that this has to stop. This has to end. You know, some of the other burdens that us Black, Indigenous, and people of color carry. If you're a Black woman, in addition to everything I already named that impacts most of us BIPOC, If you're a black woman, you also carry the burden of being perceived as angry anytime you try to assert yourself or speak up for yourself. Remember when Kamala Harris, during the vice presidential debate, said, 
to Mr. Pence. I'm speaking. And everyone cheered for her? Yeah, that was great then. But you and I know, when you show up and you do that in your workplace, on your board meetings, you know you're perceived as angry and that you need to just calm down. If you're Latinx, you carry the burden of being perceived as illegal. If you're Muslim, the burden of being a terrorist or being associated with one. If you're an Asian woman, you're perceived as smart and docile. If you're a South Asian woman, you're right there with Asians. Smart, docile, exotic, and viewed as the model minority. And these are only some of the burdens that we carry. And not only are these the burdens we carry, they're also the way that the system keeps us separated and divided. It puts us in a hierarchy. It splits us off and categorizes us and puts us in silos. And this divisiveness leads to further perpetuation of the very same system that keeps us weighed down with these burdens. (laughs) It's a never-ending fucking cycle. That is, until we can see it, heal it, and release ourselves from it. You deserve that. You deserve to be released and free from the burdens, from the trauma, from the pain. And you deserve it not because you did something or you achieved something, but you deserve it simply because you exist. And that is my heart's greatest desire for you, that you get to be liberated from the pain that has been carried with you for generations. These are some of the topics we'll be diving deeper into in the sanctuary for BIPOC women in leadership. I'm really excited about the sanctuary. Because it's where powerful leaders like you will be coming together in community, supporting one another in a way that only other BIPOC can understand, while also learning the ways to remove yourself and free yourself from the burdens of a system created to keep you down. Visit www.bipocsanctuary.com to learn more and get on the wait list. In upcoming episodes of the podcast, we're going to dig a little deeper into the model minority and how it was built on a system based on anti-blackness to keep BIPOC further separated and divided. Like I told you, we don't bullshit around here. Thank you so much for being here with me and for your healing. Because as you heal, you heal the collective. And with that... I'm out. And of course, before I go, I want to acknowledge all of the support that I have to make this podcast possible, including Diego Velasquez, the podcast editor and creator of the beautiful custom music you hear, Ana Marie Olvina, who's my assistant. 
and makes all of the beautiful graphics you see on social, as well as the blog post transcript of every episode. Jillian over at Epoxy Studios, whose photography is our cover art, as well as pretty much any picture that you see of me on social. And lastly, the divine wisdom that flows through me so that I can bring these messages to you. Take really good care, and I'll be back next week.